All right, so we're ready to start our first assignment. So in your new sketchbook, open it up and place or write your name on the inside cover so that we know whose is whose when you guys return to school. And we're gonna take a ruler and your number two pencil and outline it. Let's go, let's see, it only fits eight inches diagonal. So we'll just go straight up and down on both sides. So you get a long rectangle. Then you are going to make a tick mark, which is like a little dash. Actually, did you guys know that the zero starts a little bit in? I should tell you that first, not on the edge of the ruler. So I'm gonna go to the first tick mark and line up that tick, that line, the first line you see, which is the zero with the edge of the paper and make a tick mark next to the half inch and the one, and then we'll do two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a half. So you begin and end with a half. This first small section will number our value one, and then our value two, and then we're gonna start bigger sections and do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Usually I do a 10 value scale, um, 10 numbers long, but that's okay. Ours will just be a little shorter, no big deal. So now you're ready to shade your first value scale. When I grade this friends, you're gonna be uploading a photo of it to Google Classroom. It is due at the end of class today. So by the end of the day, sorry. So by 11.59 PM is when it's due. You um, must, 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 shade very, very slowly because I'm gonna be really picky on if it's shaded super smooth and there's no streaky lines or the value doesn't jump from dark to light. So suggestion, shade slow and press lightly and listen very carefully to the tricks I tell you so that you can do it successfully the first time. It's very tough to get a four on this assignment because I want you to master shading with a number two pencil and you're not allowed to blend with a tissue or your finger or a paper towel. You can't blend or smear it at all. You have to do the whole value scale using only a number two and then the ebony at the eight and nine value at the end. And that is all you're allowed to do. Just, use the, just using those tools to make a really super smooth gradual value scale. And by mastering the mechanical skills of shading smooth from light to dark, that will help you so much when it comes to drawing realistically, you'll have control over your values. So step one, sharp, sharpen your number two pencil so that you have a ton of graphite to work with. When it's a really short point, you have less graphite um, on the side, so it makes it harder to make it smooth. For example, if I was to shade straight up and down, I end up with a really skinny line, right? But if I hold my pencil so that it's parallel to the paper, meaning like instead of shading like this, I bring my pencil down so the side of the graphite is touching the paper, you can get a wider line, right? So I'm going to hold my pencil at the end, not towards the front. And I'm relaxing my hands. I'm holding it loosely. You can hold it different, whatever works for you. But try this way first because it's what works for me. I've found it to be easier to shade really super light. Hopefully this shows up in the video, but I want you guys to make the lightest value you could possibly make all the way up here at the one. So I'm barely touching the paper and I'm using the side of my graphite and I'm making this as light as possible. And I'm gonna go over it again to try to blend in any streaky lines that I have. Forgive the washing machine sound you have in the background. My office is in the garage. <laughs> do what you have to do, right? Okay, so that's my one value. Then I'm going to bring that one value down so it looks exactly the same into the two value using the same technique. I'm traveling really slow. I'm using the side of my graphite and my hand is relaxed. Uh, another tip, you guys, is move your arm, not your wrist, because one, it'll save your wrist from getting sore, and two, it helps you make a straighter line. So go slow. Then I'm gonna go back over it 
with the same pressure, which is super, super soft, light pressure. And I go over it again. And my goal is to build up the graphite just a little at a time so that I can make the two just a tiny bit darker than the one, creating our value scale. One more time. Pressing lightly. And when I'm grading these, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your values to fade so slow that you can't see where one starts and one stops. And I'm also looking for um, no streaky lines. And that's what I mean by streaky, so that's bad. And then I'm gonna continue down into the th third value. If you're able to control it, you can press a tiny bit harder. If you get a dark streak, I would erase it and start over. So I'm only pressing a little bit harder. Again, I don't mind if you go out of the lines, but fill the whole rectangle. Now I'm overlapping into the two because I want to make this transition as gradual as possible, which means if you overlap the very bottom of the two where it meets the three and darken it just a little bit, then your transition will be nice and smooth and it won't be an abrupt jump to a darker value. Now to get the three darker, now I'm starting to press a little harder and I'm going over it multiple times and that looks good. All right, I'm going to finish shading the value scale, but to save you an hour of my shading, an hour of your time, I'm gonna time lapse the video. But again, remember I'm moving at the same speed you've been watching. Maybe you need to go slower, that's okay. But don't go too fast because you're gonna end up with streaks. If you have these streaks, even if it's like not as dramatic as mine, you guys, those are so hard to blend back in. It makes it even harder. You might as well just erase it and start over. Uh, because filling in these gaps and making it gradual is like more difficult than just doing it right the first time. So what I'm saying is start soft, go slow, and avoid the streaks from the beginning, meaning I'm moving the pencil down super, super slow. And I'm using the side of the graphite so it's a wider line. That'll also help avoid streaks. And this is a crucial step in learning how to draw realistically, learning how to control your values and control your pencil, showing mastery over your shading skills. scale. So when you're evaluating your value scale, here's two things you can do. You can one, you can turn it and you can cover up the values and glance left to right to see if they look the same. If they look the same, then darken the whole bottom a little darker. Um, and then two, you can also hold it up far away. Um, put it up like against, like stand it up against your computer or against a wall or something, and then stand like five, six feet away from it and squint your eyes a little bit. And that helps you see 
if there's like a light spot or an area that's the same or a streak and then you'd want to go back in and darken the whole bottom to try to bring up the dark values a little higher to blend in any streaks or any areas that are too similar. Now you can use this ebony pencil and you can go up a little farther. I wouldn't go past four because it's a pretty dark graphite. And once you go dark, you can't lighten it without an eraser. And if you use an eraser on this thing, it's gonna be, you know, streaky and hard to fill in those streaky gaps for that white section. So notice I didn't use my finger. I didn't use a tissue. I didn't use anything to blend it except the pencil. So that's what I'm grading you on. Did you blend the whole thing with your pencil? And I will 100% know without you videotaping it. I will know if you blended it and if you cheated. So no cheating, only shade with pencils. And then two, I'm gonna grade on if every section is just the tiniest, tiniest bit different. So it's a very smooth, gradual value scale change. And three, I'm gonna grade to make sure there's no streaky lines. I will show you the rubric and have fun shading.